We are Chris and Maggie Hostetter with S Ethnos 360, uh, also here in Papua New Guinea. We're still known as New Tribes Mission. And we have four kids, though you don't see them here this morning. Uh, we'll throw a picture up there for you. Our four kids are in school right now while we're videotaping this. Uh, but they're doing really well. Yeah, up until this year, the kids have all been homeschooled by me while we've been living out in the tribe. Um, and so this is their first opportunity to go to a real school in a classroom with their peers uh, full-time and they've been really really enjoying it um, especially Micah and Cole our oldest boys um, getting into the social scene making friends um, yeah just having different teachers for the subjects uh, teachers who assign fun projects and are energetic um, they're really enjoying that and they're all doing very well so thank you for praying for them yeah, so we were going to go on furlough last summer and take a six-month furlough to the state, and then COVID happened, and so we changed our minds and stayed here in Papua New Guinea, and there was a lot of factors involved with that. Uh, while we miss our family and friends and churches, churches and everybody in the states, we're not regretting that decision because life here in Papua New Guinea has been pretty good. There's been very little uh, disruption to our lives because of COVID here. Uh, there's been very little impact of COVID in Papua New Guinea. Uh, there's a few little things. We need to wear masks now and as a mission when we're getting together for church or functions um, on our centers. We're wearing masks and those things. Uh, but overall, yeah, very little disruption to our lives here. We're still able to go and come from the tribe and continue that work and continue all that, that God has for us here. And so we're praising the Lord for that, or what we've been able to do here and the work we've seen progress over the last yeah, eight, eight months where we you know, made that change of decision and decided to stay here in Papua New Guinea instead of heading home last summer. We know you guys have been dealing with it a lot more, a lot more implications in your lives and what's been locked down and a lot of people getting sick and people dying. Uh, yeah, we've been praying for you guys. I've been praying for you guys. I've been praying for you know God to be glorified through this and that we would... As, as children of God, cling to Him in the tough times and, and continue to grow in Him and be used by Him. All right, so this past week, I came out of the tribe on Thursday. Maggie and the kids stayed out of the tribe as kids are in school and, yeah, have that going. Um, so I took a trip with my two co-workers, Nate and Axel, and we had a consultant, a church planting consultant, and then we had an elder from another tribe, a Papua New Guinea citizen, uh, the five of us went into the tribe a week and a half ago, and I just got out this, yeah, this week, Thursday. Uh, anyway, a fantastic time in the tribe, really good, productive trip, and I just want to share a few things from that. So first, we had two days with the consultant in there and this elder from another tribe. His name was Jules, and this consultant, uh, he went around and was just asking lots of questions of the believers there, of our Paul brothers and sisters in Christ seeing where they're at in their walk with the Lord, seeing you know, how they're applying scripture to their lives, seeing what they know of the scriptures, a lot of different things. And it was cool to see him work, the things he's digging into, the questions he's bringing up. And, and it was also very fun and cool to see how our, how our brothers and sisters in Paul are, were dealing with those questions, how they're answering them. Sometimes it was answers different than what we'd expect, but well thought out answers. So it was fun to walk through that time with the consultant and with the church just for two days. The two days of the trip were, were focused on that. And then just this morning as a whole team, since coming back out of the tribe, we got together with that consultant and, and walked through what he saw in there and advice and tips and strategies that he has for us. And so then as a team, we're gonna talk through those things and see what things we can change or implement to help continue our church move forward, to help the believers grow and their walk with the Lord help them grow as, as leaders, you know, as uh, building up the body of Christ, you know, as a body of Christ, uh, building each other up, and the leaders in there growing as, as shepherds of the flock. And so, yeah, excited about what's happening there. Uh, so that was two days of the trip. Well, also with the, uh, this elder from this other tribe, uh, he spent a good amount of time with with our Bible teachers in the tribe and with the yeah the Christians in there encouraging them from the word uh, some things that have come up there's been some op opposition to baptism in the tribe and he is able to address some of those things and help encourage the teachers 
uh, and show them, you know, from the scriptures, you know, how to stand strong on on the scriptures and on what's true, what we know to be true about baptism and what's not true about baptism. And that was a good time seeing him encourage our church there. And then after, so it was a couple of days focused on those things. And then Joss, this elder and the consultant, he left, they both left the tribe. And then my coworker Axel and I, we had another about a week in there. And that time was spent on translation, uh, cruising ahead with, yeah, with the translation work, working together with uh, members from the church to just make sure the translation is communicating clearly, com communicating naturally in their language and not confusing to them and has good grammar and those type of things. So working through the book of Matthew and also worked through the book of First and Second Peter in the past week and that time with them, it's, it's a great time of, of not just, you know, doing this translation work, but we're diving into the scriptures and able to talk about what we're hearing and, and strengthening things as we go through. And it's a great time of, yeah, of learning from God's word and, and having that word you know, grow us and change us and work within us. So really enjoyed this trip and uh, glad to be back with my family, uh, but it was a very good productive trip and enjoyed the time with the church and my brothers and sisters in Christ there. Yeah, we've really been able to move ahead uh, much more quickly now with translation. Being able to put the kids in school has freed up a lot of my time uh, to focus on translation. And with the two of us working together, um, it just goes so much faster. And we're so grateful for the opportunity to um, have the time to work on that while we're not living in the tribe anymore. One thing you guys can be praying for as we move forward is um, the Paul Bible Teacher Group. Um, please pray for wisdom for them and for discernment for mutual love and encouragement, and also for courage. Um, the church in Paul has come to a point where they're starting to see the difference between a true believer, a true follower of Jesus, and someone who says they are a follower of Jesus, but really doesn't live like it. Um, before, up until this point, everyone in the village has been included in church. Everyone has claimed to be a believer. We have been carrying on as though people who say and confess they are believers as if they are truly believers um, and kind of going forward as one group. Um, but since we've stepped out of the tribe and out of being there day to day full time, um, we've really seen some division um, and not so much conflict in the church, but this group has an idea that's not biblical and they're, they're kind of tied to that idea instead of following what the scripture says. and this other might, group might have another idea of something that's not biblical. And instead of uh, studying the scripture, being under the teachers, following that uh, teaching, what they're doing is kind of going off in their own direction, while at the same time still coming to church on Sundays, still saying, yeah, yeah, I believe Jesus is true, we're all believers together. Um, but they're seeing those divisions, and we don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. We think that at some point, um, it's going to have to come to light that not everyone who says they're a believer is actually following Jesus with their life. Um, and so pray for the teachers as they navigate through that because it's, it's not cultural in Paul to oppose someone strongly, especially if that person has a higher status in the community than you. And we do have several teachers who are uh, strong believers and who are doing what Jesus says to do and wanting to be leaders in their church but they are young and they have no status and traditionally no say in the community so especially be praying for those guys and be praying for us too just to know how to help them we uh, are in communication with them we can call them on the phone and once in a while we're even able to video chat with them through Microsoft Teams um, but the cell phone tower is not always working and even when it is, it's different trying to hear things over the phone and then give feedback and encouragement over the phone um, as opposed to being on the ground, being with them and, and walking through it together. Um, so if you could just pray for our Bible teachers, pray for the church as a whole too, uh, because as they go forward and maybe uh, people start to drop away from, from the believing body, um, pray for the believers to still show love to them. Um, because that is one of the biggest ways to witness for Christ in this country is just the love that people, that believers should have for each other um, and for those outside of the church as well. So please be praying for those things. Yeah, we've known since day one, I and mean, we, we taught 
we share the gospel with the Paul people. And from day one, is like the whole community, oh yes, we're all in this together. But we knew that among that group, that there was some that, you know, with their mouth professing faith, but their hearts are far from the Lord. And now, as you know, since we moved out of the tribe uh, seven, eight months ago, and our, and our co-workers have moved out of the tribe too, so there's no missionary presence anymore, it's starting to come out now, those who are walking with the Lord, their hearts are desiring to know God and to make Him known and, and to follow the things of God, and those who their hearts never were there. And so that's coming out, as Maggie just talked about. And so, yeah, it's, it's not necessarily a bad thing, and, but it can be a tough thing for our, our Bible teachers in there, those guys that are, you know, really, there's, there's among that group, there's guys that are functioning as elders already. They're stepping into those roles, functioning as elders. And so it's a tough situation for them to walk through and walk through that carefully. And it's a new situation for them. So, yeah, I would really appreciate your prayers. Um, for the church there and it will continue to be strengthened and grow uh, yeah so our next trip is spring break in March where we'll all we will all go as a family for just over a week and two things on that trip that we'll be focusing on is one working again with our Bible teachers there to continue to encourage them and equip them and talk through issues with them and we're actually going to be talking about as a team these next couple of weeks are we ready to like formally acknowledge formally recognize some of these guys to say these guys are now elders with us we the church still sees us missionaries we are the elders of this church and rightfully so they're not there yet to be you know completely on their own but i think we're close to be able to say hey there's a few guys that we're going to give them that position too along with us to work together going forward and so that could be a whole new step you know we got to talk about that as a team what we're going to do there um, but we're getting close to that point so we'll be equipping and, and encouraging our, our teachers while we're there and continue the work on translation we have one more comprehension check on the whole book of matthew to do and matthew is a big long book uh we're hoping between maggie and i and our co-workers to kind of split that up and actually get through the whole third comprehension check during our time there in March. One cool way recently we've seen God at work uh, among our Bible teachers or among guys that, yeah, we're seeing taking on the role of elders, even though they're not formally recognized yet as elders. Uh, this last week I had a couple conversations with guys who are sharing their struggle of, of they want to get down to the coast, the coast where there's town and stores, ways to earn a little money and then buy a few things they need and come back to the bush back to the jungle where they live. Uh, they live a couple days hike away from the coast and civilization. So a couple of teachers expressing you know, this desire to get down there because there's things they want to do and things they need to get you know, for caring for their families, which is a very important thing, while at the same time recognizing now's not a good time to go because they're you know, concerned about the work, the work that's happening there. They're, our group of teachers is overseeing two churches we have the church that was established you know, where we live in the tribe uh, six years ago and then another church was established about a three hour hike away uh, two years ago or a year and a half ago and so they're overseeing these two churches and carrying on the Bible teaching in these places and and they're overseeing the whole literacy program and what's happening there and so these teachers this couple guys shared you know this struggle between yeah the life of and work of taking care of themselves and the family, but also, you know, this burden on their shoulders of caring for the church and the struggle there, but how they're seeing, okay, they can't just leave this work. They've got to, they can't just desert the church, can't just desert their brothers and sisters in Christ and go off and do, you know, the other things we need to do. And so they're, it's a tough thing for them, but they're, they're you know, walking through that well and the teachers, I think, will help help each other and help support each other and work that out so you know a few guys can go at a time and come back maybe some other guys get down to the coast and and do what they need to do but it's cool to see that attitude of that concern and care for the church and the work that's happening and yeah really really proud of these guys and the way god's working in them and growing them and the way they're stepping up to, to take on leadership and take on responsibility uh, another way that uh, the Paul people got to see God at work in their own lives recently was um, there's a dispensary in Paul that just stocks very simple things, pain medicine, a few antibiotics, worm pills, things like that. Um, but there's no other medical help 
and anywhere near them other than that dispensary. And so our coworker Sandra trains St. Paul people to run that dispensary, make simple di uh, diagnoses for people who are ill, um, and hand out or sell medicine. Um, well, it was time for them to restock their supply of medicine. And so another missionary from a different tribe who was also taking his dispensary workers to the coast, to town, to buy medicines for them, offered to take our guys along, kind of show them which pharmacy to go to, introduce them to the pharmacy owners, they get a little discount, um, and just help them in that way. And so a group of men went down to Paul, or sorry, so a group of uh, Paul men and women went to the coast, they met this missionary, they made the rounds to the pharmacies, they went to the hospital, uh, they got hooked up with the discount for the future, um, and they even got some, some free stuff that was given to them because they're willing to do this work out in the bush where uh, it's hard to you know, convince a, a fully trained doctor to go and live. And after that trip, one of the men called Chris and he was just rejoicing so much. They were so happy because um, they had really worried about this trip. It's a big deal for someone who's lived in the jungle their entire life doesn't necessarily feel super comfortable speaking the trade language, has no concept of higher math or you know adding and subtracting prices, discounts, percentages, any of that, to go into a store, uh, deal with management, make these purchases, uh, and then yeah, deal with payment and change and all that. That was just really intimidating for them. Um, but he called Chris and he was so happy with how things went. Um, getting to go alongside with this other group from another tribe, having the missionary there to help them, and just the ease of everything. It went well. There was no problem. You know, no one got mad at them in the store. Everyone was, people were giving them free medicine, you know, to take back for nothing. And, um, and they were just so happy for the way God answered their prayers, for all of that to go well and for them to be able to bring all that back into the bush um, and then have it there to care for the community and the communities that surround us. So that was pretty cool. You guys can praise God for that. Um, last time we were in the States, it was because of my health. Um, I was having a lot of what seemed like neurological issues, a lot of inflammatory issues, and we just couldn't figure out why. Um, and even after being in the, in the States, we couldn't figure out why. So we came back here just trusting that God would give us the grace and the strength to do what He wanted us to do. Um, and he did. It wasn't long after we got back that I started um, changing my diet a bit just to try to control some of the inflammation. And it made a huge difference, um, especially in my muscle weakness issues. And so we moved back into the bush and were able to stay there. We did end up having to come out more often than we had before um, just to give me a little break to rest up and you know go back in there and keep working. Um, stress really seemed to be an issue um, causing a lot of inflammation and, and just really um, making me wear down a lot and be really tired all the time. And so um, when we moved out of the bush six weeks ago or six months ago uh, to come and live here on our mission center, that really helped too. Just not having that daily stress of living in the tribe, um, being out here, it's just a little more relaxed, it's just a different feel, but it really took of that burden of stress off my shoulders quite a bit. And so my health has been good. I've been feeling good. I've been able to play volleyball, um, I've been having good energy, and I've been really thankful for that. So thank you for praying for my health. Um, one thing that you guys can be praying for that's coming up next week is uh, I've been having lots of jaw pain lately, just on one side. And while everything else has been getting better with my health, this has been continuing to get worse. And so um, we're thinking it may not be just a case of simple inflammation. We're not sure. but. Next week, Chris and I will go down to our capital city where there's an international hospital and uh, we'll see a doctor down there and just see if he can give us any answers as to why this is happening. Um, yeah, so you guys can pray for that. It's, it'll be Tuesday our time, so yeah. Monday sometime for you. <laughs> just a two-day quick trip, get down there, get back. Our kids will be staying here, others will be watching over them. And, and yeah, pray for answers and, and healing for Maggie and her jaw. Uh, just a couple other real quick prayer points here. Uh, literacy program in Paul. We have a good literacy program and it's now in three different places in Paul where people are learning to read and write their own language. There's no other schools in Paul. Yeah, people are not educated there, but they're learning to read and write their own language and that's very cool. One thing we're seeing though is 
they come out of this school and they're, they've learned to read, but they're beginner readers. And so we really would like to develop this program or take it further so they can go from beginner readers to being fluent readers. And it will really help them, you know, in their walk with the Lord of getting into scriptures if it's easy to read compared to such a chore to read. And so really want to, yeah, grow this program and see what we can do to help, help get guys from beginning, being beginner readers to being fluent readers. So pray for wisdom there and how to implement that and, yeah, what to do with that. I uh, just would love to see literacy, yeah, just continue to grow. Uh, we have a really bu busy spring these next three months, March, April, May. A lot of things happening. We have different trips. Like you talked about going to Morrisby next week. We have during spring break and later March. Uh, I had to back to the tribe for a week in April. Maggie and I, there's all the consultants in Papua New Guinea, all the new tribe mission consultants here. We're all getting together for a big powwow meetings together. Maggie is a translation consultant in training and I am a culture and language acquisition consultant. And so we'll be going to these meetings and that'll be a trip in April. Uh, what else do we have happening? I've got a couple trips in May, uh, going to a tribe to do a culture and language evaluation with a couple missionaries there. Uh, also all the new missionaries to the field doing pidgin, uh, trade language, doing evaluations for them as they're learning pidgin and going back to the tribe again in May. Yeah, a lot of things happen in the spring and then school gets out beginning of June and we wanna to head to the States, uh, take our furlough this year. Uh, because of COVID, international travel is quite the mess right now, also very expensive right now. And so last year at this time, we already had our tickets bought, but then we didn't go on furlough. Anyway, this year it's like, we're not even really thinking about tickets yet for the next couple of months because things are just changing all the time. And yeah, anyway, just pray for, pray for that. Pray that plans would come together. Pray that we'd be able to find plane tickets that don't get canceled, you know, a week before the flight that aren't super expensive. And we'd be able to come home this summer and yeah, have our furlough, uh, spend a year in the States is the plan visiting our families, friends, churches, supporters, everybody. And we'd, yeah, we'd like to be able to come home and just pray for those plans that that would come together.